Good afternoon. It seems that uh, Robert Blake has put up a video now talking about not hurting the Christians with uh, the words. And we're going to see where this goes. But the first part, he starts talking here. And he, he goes, I'm just going to follow the, what the Bible says. Just give you scriptures. Well, he didn't do that in the article. Dealing with the interracial. He can he can place interracial marriage with interheritage marriage, by the way, people. He's confusing heritage with race. People can have to be different races and share the same heritage. But Titus 2.13 says, rebuke them sharply. So they may be sound in the doctrine. So make sure you... This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. And I'm just starting the video, but Baker wants to act like he has his, his hands are perfectly clear. If you see some of the emails that he sent out either to me directly or speaking about me, you'd see he's called me everything. He's denied that I'm a King James Bible believer because I go after King James, King James Bible, people who use the King James Bible. Hmm, why does he do that? Because they have a standard and they're not using the standard. They're, not, they're, they're uh, violating the standard. They're going against their own standard. So he denies I'm a King James Bible believer because I go after King James Bible teachers And he's called people, he's doubted our salvation, he's doubted well, all kinds of things. So when this guy's talking holy in the vow up there, remember, I keep that on point. I don't know, I'm doing a lot of, uh, I'm getting a problem with my videos, so, and this is a long video, so we'll see how far I go. This is 2, 3, 20, 21 in. Tells me there's a certain way to act, there's a certain way to react. By the way, Matthew 18 has nothing to do about your beliefs, going private about your beliefs. It's about a personal wrong that someone has done. This guy has added something to scriptures. Titus 3.10, the same thing. He tries to add that in there, that you're supposed to go to heretic in private. So he adds something in, interpretation has nothing to do. Matthew 18 is talking about a private problem among two individuals in the church and they can't solve it, then they go and they, they take it further and further into the church. But heresy is an issue, a doctrinal issue. And if someone is teaching heresy in the church, they have to be thrown out. Then includes the pastor. <laughs> the pastor go out. So that's not a personal issue. He wants to make it a per oh, don't talk anything public because uh, Matthew 18. See, they quote scripture, but they deny the true context, people. You can quote scripture up and down. The, the Satan quoted scripture to the Lord in, in order to tempt him. Just because you quote scripture doesn't mean it's quoted correctly, in in contextually, with the correct context. A certain way to talk and a certain way to walk. And so I'm supposed to follow what the Bible says. Yeah. So stop lying. The guy lies by everything. <laughs> he doesn't want me to call out on it. So let's start out today with Job chapter 27 and verse 4. I just want to share these verses, and I hope it's an encouragement. Um, a lot of people, I think, will be helped by this, because a lot of people seem to be going through the same thing. Someone that they love has hurt them by something they said. And they're, they're hurt. Now, I know the Bible says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. I understand. We that are saved, why, why we shouldn't be offended or easily offended. But, you know, that we're human beings. And words can and do hurt sometimes. And so I understand that there's some people hurting. Truth hurts. The truth hurts. If you get hit with the truth, you got a choice to make. Either respond to it or reject it. This guy won't respond to the truth. He rejects it. All these weapon guys reject the truth. And uh, so, in particular areas, I want to talk to them to try to comfort them. But I'm hoping that this sermon will also go out to those that are doing the hurting, to the hurters. <laughs> and if you're one of those that is hurting people with your words. You need to take into account what the Bible says, and you need to rethink some of the things that you say. You might even need to offer an apology. 
So I just beware when people ask for apologies. Beware of people who ask for apologies. So when this guy wants, when he starts asking for saying for apologies, I don't ask him apologies. Just move on. But when I want you to apologize, that's an attempt to get get you under control. No, you need to apologize to me. I want to throw that out there. First of all, Job 27 and verse 4. In Job 27, 4, Job says, My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. My, my tongue, nor my tongue utter deceit. That's what this guy's doing. His tongue is uttering deceit. So he goes to Job, quotes your scripture, and denies the fact he's uttering deceit in the things he teaches. You see, that's what faith works in the Old Testament is deceit. His article saying why he's against interracial marriage is deceit. You know the story of Job and what all Job went through, and boy, did he go through a lot. If ever a man had, I guess you could say, the right to say something, <laughs> it was Job. He lost his yeah, because he was honest. <laughs> he wasn't uttering deceit like you are, uh, Robert. House, lost his family, lost everything he had. You know, if he would have said something bad, you could have gone, well, look what he went through, you know? <laughs> uh, not justifying his sin of speaking evil, but it's like, wow. He went through all that, far worse than most of us will ever go through in our lives. And he said, but you know what? I'm not going to say something I shouldn't. I'm not going to speak wickedness. I'm not going to utter deceit. There's something to be said about that. That was a man who... Yeah, he's not going to utter deceit. But that's not Robert Baker. Robert Baker does utter deceit. He tells you, the, on one, man, one side of his mouth, he tells you rapture's imminent. The other side of his mouth, he, he starts looking for signs, signs in the sky. And he, he's adamant that they can find, he can find a date of the rapture. If the rapture's imminent, you can't find a date. You can't find a date because it's going to happen any day. Wanted to do right. And he saw that it would be wrong to say something deceitful and wicked. So he said, I'm going to keep my mouth. He said, I'm going to be keep quiet. Let's go to another verse. Let's go to Psalms 34. Now, it's interesting to me, and I recommend when people are suffering, when people are going through things, I recommend, hey, go to the Psalms. The book of Psalms is Old Testament. Sure, we understand that. But it's also... A, a book that really is for comfort because a lot of times you have David in the Old Testament in the book of Psalms talking about this guy's my enemy and he's attacking me and this guy's my enemy and he's hurting me and this guy's my enemy and he said this about me and it's all about Lord I trust you Lord protect David a man by saved by faith alone Romans 4 not faith in works me from their lies Lord and, and it's a lot of people have told me brother breaker I went through some of the worst times of my life and reading the Psalms gave me comfort. So, reading the book of Psalms, if you're really going through some things, if you're suffering, if people are lying about you, if you're... If Ooh, you're, lying about you. Here we go. No one's lying about you, Robert. See that? See the hypersensitivity there? No one's lying about you, Robert. You're having to go through some things in which there are people just, for no reason, just hurting you on purpose with their words. The Psalms is a good place to go. And you can identify with David and some of the things that he went through. Psalms 34, 12. Psalms 34, 12. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he shall see good? Verse 13 says, Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. The first verse says, Hey, you want to have good days? You want to live a long life? You want to have a good time in life and want everything to go good? Well, Keep your tongue from speaking evil. Don't say things you shouldn't. Boy, that's a... Mm -hmm. Good advice. Don't lie. A good verse there. An interesting verse. Hey, let's, uh, let's watch what we say. Because words can hurt people. Yeah, very true. He's giving you scriptures to prove his point, and yet he's ignoring the fact that he's deceiving people with false doctrine. Psalms 50. Let's go to Psalms. I just have lots of verses here that I... David lied. David got Uriah the Hittite killed. 
I just want to share with you. Let me give you a little personal testimony as well. And just try to be a blessing, okay? Psalms 50, verse 19 and 20. Psalms 50, verse 19 says, Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sitteth and speaketh against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. <laughs> now, clearly, this is not a passage of Scripture saying, and that's a good thing to do. No, clearly this is a passage of Scripture. If what's being said about the guy is wrong, but what is said about Robert Blakey isn't wrong. You're saying, and that's wrong, and you shouldn't do that. That's not something that God wants. And I just find it interesting if yeah. we try... If if what you're accusing a person about is incorrect, if it's you know if if, if it's untrue, but what's said by Robert Breaker regarding these other issues is not untrue. But spiritually applied it to us, who is our mother? Oh, Love Staroloff says this book right here is my spiritual mother. So if you're a brother in Christ and I'm a brother in Christ, well, our Father is God in heaven for sure. Who's our mother? This book. The Bible is our mother. <laughs> I thought I thought Jerusalem was our mother. New Jerusalem was our mother. <laughs> Make this stuff up. The Bible is our mother. Okay. We're both saved by the same book. By the words from this book is what showed us how to be saved. So last yeah, and we know how to read English, and that's why pastors are held and teachers are held to the same. Aspect of truth. You just can't say put out scripture and say believe those believe what I tell you, and ignore when the person says well that scripture is not saying what you're saying. Thing we should do if we've got the same spiritual mother, if we're both saved by the blood of Christ, the last thing we should do is lie about one another and evil speak and say things about if it's a lie. But what if you're saying the truth? Paul rebuked Peter, who was separating from the Gentiles. He rebuked him openly for doing so. He wasn't worried about his feelings. One another that are just wrong. We should not, as it says here in this passage, slander and give our mouths to evil to frame deceit. Shouldn't do it. Shouldn't do it. Psalm 64. Psalms chapter 64. And yet, what's sad to me is so many Christians do do it. See, here's assume what's said, said about him is slander. But it's the truth. <laughs> well, it's the truth. Show us, Robert, where we've slandered you. You keep going back to that article and you conflate heritage with race. People of the same, ra different races can have, have the same heritage. That's how confused this guy is. He has a, he has a problem thinking. I don't know if I've told this story before, but we got a helicopter coming over. Where I live here in, in Florida, there's several helicopter fields, and uh, they, they train all the time. So I don't know if that's too loud or not, but I've always seeing helicopters fly over. But uh, I was going to tell you this story here about, well, when I got saved, I went to Bible school, and then right after Bible school, I got out, went to Honduras for a couple of PBI. Name the school, Robert. Went to Bible school. PBI. Months and then started deputation, so I just hit the ground running in the ministry. And uh, I was surprised at how often you would find other Christians that would talk bad about other Christians. Yeah, it's a big problem. No one denies that. I was very surprised at how often people that were called preachers and ministers and ordained ministers, how often they would cuss. And it was about that time the internet came out. You know, I was I graduated from high school in '92 and graduated from Bible school in '98. So the uh, internet was still kind of in its infancy, if you will, in the '90s. But I remember what they had was called chat rooms, and you used to could go to a chat room, and there were all these Christian chat rooms, and I would visit there from some, from time to time just to see what Christians were saying. And you know, I had to stop going there. And other brothers, the same thing. They told me the same thing. They said, Brother Breaker, I got in these Christian chat rooms, and then I got off really fast. And I'm like, well, why? Why did you get away from them? Because all they were doing was cussing each other out and yelling at each other and saying bad things about each other. And they called themselves Christians. <laughs> and they were like, I don't see that as a Christian thing. The Bible says... No, it's not. So, what does that do with anything? We're not to speak evil of one another. And so that's one of the things that I learned in an, early in the ministry. There's a lot of people. <laughs> What's 
to do with anything. You're not supposed to be badly of, of another Christian. He's taken being speaking badly of another Christian as being rebuked for teaching false doctrine. These guys take everything personally. Just about ten minutes in, I'm gonna stop here and put this up because I don't want to take all day. I'll go through some more videos and see what he says has come to say. Hypersensitivity. These guys, they're Nicolaitans. They don't want to be corrected. They teach false doctrine, and then when you bring out the false doctrine, and they, they, they say, well, we got the scriptures, and the scriptures are taken out of context, or context, you know, the, the context isn't correct. Where do you get the idea the Bible is our mother? <laughs> but, the, you know, and, well, Matthew 18, he adds to that and says, personal issues and belief. See, he put a, a requirement in there. No, not personal beliefs arguing about in the church. Those are personal disagreements dealing with issues that come up in a church. Not about personal beliefs. But he wants to put that in there. See, he wants to stymie anything, speak, spo anybody speaking against him. And the reality is, if someone's teaching false doctrine, they need to be exposed to that. And this is a public ministry, by the way. He's on a YouTube channel. Okay, this is not a, a, like a local church. This is a YouTube channel. He's putting this stuff out publicly. So you have, a, a, you have every right to publicly denounce someone with another YouTube video. There's nothing wrong with that. He says such and such, he says this doctrine and such and such and these scriptures, you have every right to say, no, those doctrines are false. What he, how he's, te he's using those scriptures incorrectly. You have every right to do so with another video. You don't have to go to him. He made a, he made a public video saying these doctrines, faith and works in the Old Testament. And he puts up, a, on, on his website, he puts up that article con conflating heritage with race. You can't defend the idea from the New Testament, certainly. In the Old Testament, we had the idea of uh, it, was, it wasn't, uh, there was spiritual issues involved there. Because you have three Gentile women in the line of Christ. And then he says, well, it's just my personal, you know, personal preference. But he said, he's using the Bible to defend the personal preference. That's the problem. That's the problem. And the Bible doesn't support that personal preference. So, I'm going to stop here, I'm going to put this up, and, uh, you know, I'll look at the best of the video, as I said, I'm getting a lot of problems, static, and these videos are going slow, but, so let's, we'll put it up at the end and say, he's hypersensitive, he's the one talking about, oh, you, if you attack, if you go after a doctrine these guys are teaching, you're going after them personally, they take it personally. Well, that's effeminate. That's effeminate. They're thin-skinned. And that's the problem. That's why they shouldn't be teaching. That's why there's no comments on this video there. You can't take it. But on his emails, you'll see a different... You'll see a different route on emails. All you people think, he, oh, he's all sweet and light. You see why he is in emails. He's even got a thing in the bottom of his emails talking about... If, this email is sent you directly. You have no right to reproduce it. Blah, blah, blah. It's like a CIA operation or something. No. Let me stop with this up. Amen. Thank you.